Hi, Nick Tucker here with the Historical Fencing Guild. Well, folks, it's been a while since I've shot a video. I'm actually in my new home. The sleigh area is so not ready for this. It's a warehouse right now. But you guys want footage. You deserve footage, so I'm going to throw it out there. Now, I wanted to do a video that focuses on two things. I want to talk about underappreciated weapons, and I wanted to talk about getting more concussive force out of a concussive instrument. Because as I switch gears a little bit in prepping for the sequel to The Simple Sword, writing up The Strong Sword, which moves farther away from thrusting and more to concussive combat, I find myself you know, needing to express that more because this is why we train so intently, uh, intensely on calibration. So that when we do, we have the control to do more aggressive styles, practice them safely, and then adjust the calibration as the situation matters. So, I said there are two reasons, underappreciated weapon. I want to talk about the club. The simple, humble club. This is a billy club. I purchased this at Goodwill years ago for like a buck fifty. I cleaned it thoroughly just in case, because you never know. But um, this little band here is actually where you would tie a rope if you were using a lanyard. And that's very handy. It's a uh, lanyard's for a big S SCA heavy fighter friend in that they keep the, the weapon from being fully removed from you if it's knocked out of your hand. But with the different techniques and the way I'm playing with it, it would be a little compromising, and I'm not feeling that right now. But, let's talk about the club. In D&D &D terms, club usually rank, ranks around uh, a 1d6 item. In real world, you know, this was a go-to for police for many years. They've since, many of which switched to either the Tanfa or a large flashlight, which functions much like this. But I, I find myself oddly drawn to the efficiency and, dare I say, elegance of the billy club. The billy club is just a little bit shorter than my arm, so that makes a very nice short sword equivalent. Now, there are people who can say, Nick, you're a fencer first and everything else later. A billy club? You can thrust with a stick to devastating effect. No, you will not implode people. You know, you won't run people through unless, you know, it's very, very strong or weirdness happens. But it can be devastating. A blunted sword broke three of my ribs and dislocated five. Through armor. <laughs> through SCA fencing armor. If I could do that with a blunted flexing schlager, what I could do with a thrust on a rigid wooden stick, assuming it doesn't break, is devastating. But, again, we're not here to talk about the thrust. We're here to talk about the stick. The point of balance is a little high. If you look, it's almost at the sweet spot. This is far more elegant than you want to understand because this means that the club is going to flow nicely. It's going to let you do what you want. Overall, it's very light, maybe a pound if that. But it's stout, the weight is forward, so it very little force actually applies a great amount of impact. This is why for hundreds of years police carried it. The other nice thing about club is I could carry easily a knife of this length. You know, short sword, my, my uh, Bilbo is only a little bit longer than this. But were I to bring it to bear, it would be intensely easy to kill somebody. With a club, it is much harder to render a fatal blow without it being a blow to the head. I, if you hit somebody in the head with a stick for a defending yourself legal, you have to understand you're on the risk of killing them. Relatively easy. At the least, you know, depressed skull fractures, things like that. Uh, a lot of people on, on my list uh, watch Ramsey Dempsey. Buddy of mine, also, he was a wrestler, and he took a, a, a sink to the forehead, cracked his skull, and that is a soft spot forever. So head blows can and will be very fatal. That's why in almost any game, a shot to the head is considered fatal. But a shot to the collarbone, which is not fatal usually, 
if breaking it is one of the most painful, debilitating things you can do to somebody. That's handy to know. But why did I pick the club? Well, most of the weapons I prefer to use either, at bare minimum, have a cross guard, usually have some sort of cup hilt or basket hilt, which means you can't see my hand real well. What I want for the purpose of this demonstration is something you can see clearly, which, big black stick, you can see it. No hand guard, nothing to, to disguise the motion. So I want to talk about how to use a stick, how to use a concussive weapon. This is a saber, a, a, a great sword, to an extent. When you get two hands, you're, you're doing something else to get that motion. And I'll explain, because it's actually the same motion. But, with a one-handed sword, if I sword, stick, whatever, I take it, I keep it locked in. Ice pick grip. Bang, bang, bang. Very natural. There's a lot of force. But if you notice, if you see a swordsman hit, they seem to get a slap. And it seems to hit just a little bit harder. Why is that? Well, there's a trick. And the trick is this. Okay, first we're going to start with our old friend, the keyhole grip. Keyhole grip gives lots of mobility. You want to keep, whenever you're using a sword, or sword simulating object, your hand loose. This is in the simple sword. It's going to be here. I repeat it a lot because it's a very underappreciated bit of, uh, of knowledge. Keep your hand loose. The, this is locked in. I could do just about everything I do with this or these two fingers. Bam, 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 bam. Right? No problem. And look, these motions you've all seen me fence with. Bam. Good thrust. Bam. It's all there. But to get that, you have to have a little bit of motion here. Now, when it comes to a strike, you want that loose so that you, it charges the weapon. So that at the last possible second, you have to practice this. This is just like timing or range. This is the kind of thing you have to learn. Bam. So if I grip here and I stop, the sword stops here. Watch this hit. Bam. Very, bam. Straight. It's coming around. Bam. But I'm going to change the grip slightly. Did you hear the difference? Sorry, that's my son. He's taking a bath, so it's one of the few times I can take, make a video that's relatively safe. And I don't know if the audio on the camera can pick that up. I have to be very close, so. There's a swoosh. And all that is done, created, that extra force is created by taking the loose and then making it strong. Gentle, hard. Wham. Let me, if I do it from here, you can see the motion much better. Okay, downward strike, closed fist. Keyhole, watch the loops. And what it does is it extends the shot, it extends your range, but it also provides a short burst of extra power. So, when you're out there and you're thinking about both from role-playing aspects and as, you know, a swordsman, when you're thinking about what to use, please consider the humble club. Clerics everywhere love them. Policemen love them. It's easy. It's fast. And you know what? Of the weapons, as, you know, laws come and go, one of the hardest weapons to regulate for self-defense, for training, for even in your home, is a humble club. It's devastating at short range. You can swing it fully. I'm swinging under a, a, a ceiling fan. My TV is, like, right there. And I can swing with, with confidence that I'm not going to hit anything. I'm not going to get caught up. Now, I want to talk about something else. While we're here, and we're on the topic of clubs and grips, we need to talk about a concussive blow. I want to talk about concussive blows for a second because 
when you're using a sharp weapon, like a knife or a short, short sword or a machete, and you are striking against an unarmored subject, so maybe they have clothes on, but nothing rigid to stun. You're not trying to bash through it. You're, you're looking for a cut. Now, this is where understanding your grip comes into play in the opposite sense. Because if I want to hurt somebody with this, I want to snap that, that tight as, right before it impacts. It gives it that extra punch. That's going to radiate the blow farther. Because instead of stopping here, it stops here. And that, eh, it's not quite 90. It's maybe 85 degrees of motion. Is all power going into the shot. Because, you know, they say punch through. If you're hitting with a stick and you hit like this, just like a straight punch, not much. But bam, you can feel the difference. Don't go hitting yourself, obviously, but gently. With something, maybe you've had it, something to feel the difference. But using the same technique and idea in reverse, you can make an edged weapon much more effective by actually hitting and then letting your wrist break. Not as in be damaged, but no longer be rigid. So what happens is you hit and you let it flow. Now why, Nick? You're losing a lot of force. Yes, you're losing a lot of force, but the force on an edged weapon, instead of being across this big surface area, is across a very narrow area. So it hits. By letting your, your wrist break, instead of the force hitting, and I've been banging myself on this area enough, it's just reddened, right here is all the contact. But with an edged weapon, you're not going to go full anime, you know, and just I'm lopping arms off. It's not as likely. It's much more likely to get stopped at the bone. But if you hit and let it drag past, instead of the cut being this long, the cut area is that long. It gives you essentially a draw cut that's delivered overtly so you're not on the pull it's it allows for concussive draw cut and you'll see that a lot in filipino styles so they train the sticks to do the same thing now i, I wish jim were here jim is sort of my uh my Fil filipino stick fighting guy that's become his area and if you watch him drill it's beautiful it's what he's leaning towards i do a little bit of everything but I want you to think about that. Keep you know, keeping the grip in mind. Yes, if you're you're a first starting stick jock, you know this is how you hit one handed. You know you're, you're all your power lined up. Keep your bone musculature. I get that, and that gives a lot of power. But it's a much more advanced method to understand how to adjust your grip to maximize the force, or inversely maximize the surface area. Well, this has been, oh, I hope you found it interesting. This has been uh, a video on the club, which underappreciated both real life D&D. Think about a club. It, it's been about grips, and it's giving you just a sweet taste of what's to come. Well, folks, I hope you like it. If you like, like this video, please. Share this video. Subscribe if you like what I'm doing. If you want a simple, easy context to Western martial arts, Eastern martial arts, anything involving swinging a stick, sword, knife, whatever. There are some really great things coming. I know you guys have been patient. I also want to shout out to my two patrons. You guys are literally... The only reason I was able to make through the move was I had the money that I generated on, on this channel. It's not a lot by anybody else's sense, but literally it's why we were able to fix my car. It's why we were able to keep going. So that's literally my lifeblood. So anything you can do. This video is also, it's sponsored essentially since YouTube, I've given up. YouTube won't monetize my videos because they're weapon oriented. That's okay. I, uh, this video is sponsored by the BSR Core Rulebook. The Big Stopping Robots Core Rulebook just got published in hard copy after a year of fighting for content to get it right and editing issues. I'm really proud of it. If you want to be able to play a tactics game that is easy to learn, fun to play, low cost, please 
either get my book in, in the ebook format, which I updated one, to match the hard copy, or in the hard copy. Also, on that note, I will be at Arcticon February 23rd in Merrillville, Indiana. It's at St. Sava's Orthodox Church. There's a, a banquet hall off to the side. It is an amazing event. All the proceeds after, you know, the bills are paid go to, usually it's supporting veterans. I believe that's what it is again this year to prevent veteran suicide. It's a wonderful cause. I've been involved for several years now. My old buddy Ben Starkey runs it. Please, 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 if you're in Northwest Indiana, you know, Southwest Michigan, Southeast Wisconsin, Northwest, uh, Northwest Chicago, uh, I'm sorry, North, Northeast uh, Illinois, Chicago area, please, it's right off 65. Please look it up. Come to Arctic Come. If you want to support me, I got my book, Simple Sword. If you want to learn techniques like this, it's in there. If you want you know, my games, I published several. They're all designed for simple, easy play. Thank you. I've been rattling on too much. Please comment. Anything you want, I want to serve the community. So like, share, subscribe. Thank you. And as always, support your local sword master.